Good. Try that again. Good morning. Good to see you guys this morning. So, just so you know, how many of you have seen that movie, by the way? Okay, lots of people, because it's like 20 years old now, Matthew McConaughey. There's all kind of famous people in that movie. But here's the deal. If you really pay attention, that movie's not about angels. You really think about it? So, at the end, he says, there's not an angel with you. And, and so, what happens? It's a movie, really, about faith. And at that point in the movie, what happens? His coach has faith in him. Actually builds his faith. And all the people, flapping their arms like maniacs, actually build the faith of the guy. And the truth is this. Listen, some of you have been praying, God, I need more faith. And you've been asking God for a sign. And, and here's what I want you to know. That in this verses, in these verses we're going to look at today, God actually sends an angel to give a message to a guy named Zach, and he doesn't believe him. So just so you know, if you don't have faith, an angel showing up and telling you something is not going to help you have faith. If you don't have faith, Jesus showing up and telling you something is not going to build your faith. But I also want you to know that it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to struggle with doubt. Anybody who's been a Christian for any length of time will struggle with doubt and will struggle with difficulty. By the way, a little faith statement here for you. I honestly believe God is doing great things at our church. Sixteen people joined our church this weekend. People are signed up to get baptized and great things are happening and God is doing things. People are signing up to serve. Things are happening. God is doing great things. And let me, let me tell you how I know this. Because when God begins to move, typically what happens is right before then, something happens that's not good. And typically, a, a situation happens or a circumstance happens, and I think, man, that's not good. And then right after that is when I see God begin to move. So I want to say this for you. In your life, know that if you're going through difficulty right now, if all of a sudden it seems like all of hell has broken loose in your life, it could just be, just like everything just fell in the kitchen, it could just be that all hell is breaking loose because God is getting ready to let all heaven be let loose in your life. So don't lose faith in the difficulty and don't think that God is unaware as you go through death. Now, I want to talk about faith just a minute. So I thought of, you know... What does faith look like? And, and faith is scary. And um, we went on this one um, uh, trip a few years ago, and we went whitewater rafting. It wasn't much of a whitewater rafting trip. But when we got to a certain place on the river, they had this rock that was about 18 feet out of the water. For those of you who don't know, I'm afraid of heights. I don't like heights at all. And uh, I struggle with heights. And, and people have said, well, you know you won't get hurt. I know, but I don't know, right? But we were talking about faith on this trip, and they said, Eric, you need to go jump off the rock. So I decided, you know, I'm going to build up my courage, and, and I'm going to jump off the rock. So I went up, and as I, there was a line of people, and so as I went to go run, the girl in front of me panicked and slid to the end of the rock and backed up and decided not to go off the rock. Right before me, right before me. <laughs> but my brain said, you're going to go. So I said, I'm going. And as I went... My left arm did not know that my brain said we're going off the rock. And my left arm, as I jumped off the rock, reached back and grabbed the edge of the rock. Which is, by the way, the most dangerous thing you can do. Because it actually pulls you back towards the rock, which I did. But thankfully, I didn't bounce off the rock. And I hit the water. But I hit the water like a maniac. And I think I belly flopped or something, you know. And, and I came up. You know, the water's freezing. And people are laughing. And what a great experience. And, um... <laughs> So, so the message today is don't have faith. Y'all have a great day? Thanks for that. No, I'm okay, so, so, so they said, uh, so the youth said, Eric, you need to go again. So what do you mean you need to go again? That wasn't a full jump. You grabbed the rock. I said, no, no, I didn't grab the rock. My left arm grabbed the rock. And so I decided I would go again. But this time I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to be manly. And, you know, sometimes like when guys are charging into battle, they yell. You know, like, oh, right as they're running, oh, and then they get killed. But they, but they go. And, and yeah, you know, every movie, right? Every movie, right? 40 guys are going to run, and, like, oh, and they all get shot. And you're like, the yelling really didn't help. But anyway, so, 
But that's what my brain said. So I got up on top of the rock and I decided I'm gonna get to the end and as I get real close, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna jump off the rock. So that's what I did. I ran and as I jumped off the rock, I went I jumped off the rock and went along. And when I came up, everybody was laughing, laughing. People I didn't know were laughing, mocking. And apparently I said, I said, well, why are you laughing? They're like, you scream like a girl. <laughs> so what I thought was, yeah, was ah! the rock. And, hey, but I just want you to know, I jumped off that rock. I get credit, even though I scream like a girl. Now here's how that relates to faith, if you're wondering how the heck does this movie and this story relate to any of this sermon. Here's the deal. Faith can be scary. And you don't know all the answers. And you really don't know what's next. By the way, when you jump off a rock, there is a step of faith that says, I believe the water is going to be there and I believe I'm going to hit the water the right way. And I believe no bird is going to fly between me and the water on the way down. And you know, all the things that cross a person who's scared of heights thoughts. Anytime you take a step of faith in your life, it's going to be difficult. But doubt will drain you. And, and doubt and fear go hand in hand and they fight against faith in your life. But when you begin to have faith, you'll find that you begin to have strength in the Christian life. Even, even bigger than that, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, many people think it's about working or doing things for God, but it's about having faith. Basically saying, God, I don't understand everything, but I trust you. If you want your prayers to answer, answer, you have to pray prayers of faith where you say, God, I, I trust you with the answer. I mean, I would like you to do this, but God, I'm trusting you with the answer to this prayer. Even if the answer is not what I want, I'm trusting you. So today I want to give you some practical ways to go from this idea of doubt to being a blessing, to, to living a life of faith. So first I want to talk about why do we doubt? Why do we doubt? Because there's all kind of doubt in life. You can doubt God, the existence of God. Uh, you can doubt, doubt Scripture. You can doubt yourself. Um, you can doubt your position or who you are. You can doubt other people. But when we doubt, and especially when we doubt spiritual things, there's reasons why we doubt. Number one, one of the reasons we doubt is because God's plans don't follow our plans. Listen. When you were a kid, you had a plan for your life. It may have been like me to be a garbage man. It's true, my dad would come in with his work truck every day and he would stop at the end of the driveway so my brother and I could hang off the back of his truck. Because we were gonna be garbage men when we grew up. My plan died, right? It didn't happen, it didn't happen. And, and, and you had a plan for your life and it looked great, didn't it? But in life, you and I both know that things happen that we don't like. Difficulties happen, and any person of great faith is also a person who's been through those times where God didn't answer prayers the way we thought he was going to answer prayers. God didn't do what I thought he should do. I try to tell God what to do. By the way, he doesn't, so just so you know. And maybe for you, maybe it's you know a job situation. Maybe it's a marriage situation. Maybe it's a family relationship. There's something in your life, maybe God, and, and you might even feel ashamed because maybe something you thought would happen a certain way isn't happening that way. When the story in Luke chapter 1, that's the same thing that happened in this story. God did not answer prayers the way they thought. So listen to, listen to this story. During the time Herod ruled Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the Abacab. <laughs> I know I didn't say Abacab, but I like that better because <laughs> it's everywhere. Um, who belonged to the Abijahab Ab group, Zechariah's wife Elizabeth came from the family of Aaron. That's the priestly family. Zechariah, or Zach as we like to call him, and Elizabeth, listen to this, truly did what God said was good. That's a pretty high compliment. But then it goes further. Listen. They did everything the Lord commanded and were without fault in keeping his law, right? Most of us think, if I do everything God wants... I'll get everything I want. If I follow all the rules, everything's going to go just great. And the problem happens when we say, I'm doing everything God wants, but I'm not getting everything I've prayed for. It says, but they had no children because Elizabeth could not have a baby. And both of them were, listen to this, very old. <laughs> 
Bible could have just said old. This is kind of mean right here. Have you ever been called very old? I was walking up a hill at, at, at Ridgecrest, and as I was walking up the hill, there were some young people in front of me, and one of the girls was getting tired, and one of the guys called back and said, look, that guy's about to catch you. And I said, yeah, and I'm old. And the kid said, yes, you are. Just like that. I was hoping for a, no, you're really not. But I got a, yes, you are. Okay. Most of them were very old. So what's happening here? It says they're doing everything God wanted them to do. But they're not getting what they thought they should have. It's not happening. Life isn't going the way they thought. You ever feel that way? You, you planned you, you thought you knew how things would go. You've prayed. You've had faith. You've walked in obedience. And yet God didn't answer your prayers the way you wanted to. I'd like to welcome you to the Bible. You know, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He did not say, take up your jacuzzi. And sometimes the cross is difficult. And sometimes it's a struggle. Later, Elizabeth actually admits that she felt ashamed. See, that's one of the things that happens to us. When life doesn't go the way we want, or even when we blow it sometimes, we feel ashamed. And then that shame begins to take over. And shame really is the opposite of faith, too. And when we become ashamed, what happens? We begin to withdraw. We're afraid to do what God wants us to do. We're afraid to step out. We don't feel like we have the ability. We feel like God can't use us. And yet, there's times in life that life just doesn't go the way we want. We're disappointed with how things are. So here's what I want you to do. The next time you feel that way, and you maybe feel shame about your life, maybe, you, maybe it's something you've done. I mean, you, if you're honest about it, you're like, I did this and I'm an idiot. The next time you feel that way, or you feel like, you know, God, you're an answer to prayer, I want you to remember this. Remember how much... God loves you. And remember how much God forgives you. The truth is, no matter what happens next in your life, if you receive God's forgiveness, even if your cancer is not healed, if you receive God's forgiveness, even if your life does not go the way you thought it would go and you don't feel like it went the way you think it should, if you receive God's forgiveness, eternity is promised to you so that even when you struggle in this life, you can say, God, you know what? Even though life isn't going the way I thought it would go, I trust you because you love me and you've forgiven me. Number two, we forget that God hears our prayers. You ever feel absolutely alone? When I was in junior high, I was uh, in the choir. And um, I had a pretty good pitch. I've got, I don't, I don't know about perfect pitch, but I've got a pretty good pitch. So usually I can find the pitch of a note. If I've heard a song a few times, I can usually find the pitch. So in seventh grade, they had me stand out front, and I was to start the song without any key, piano accompaniment at all, not even a pitch pipe, nobody giving me a key. And I was to stand up, and I was to sing. Hello, blessed one, the Lord is and then the choir came in because they used that pitch. And they came in. Lord is with you. Right? So hundreds of people in the auditorium. And I get up. Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Great time of life. You're so confident at that age. <laughs> so I got up. And somehow between the time I left home and the time I got there, puberty hit. And suddenly the alfalfa part of Eric showed up. And I got up and I went, hey. Hello, blessed one. <clears throat> the Lord is with you. Oh, darling. <laughs> and of course, because my pitch was off, and the choir came in all over the place. It was horrible. If I could have left the earth at that moment, I would have chosen. If I could have snapped my fingers and disappeared, it would have been awesome. But I was still there, and I felt alone, like I had just shamed the world. You ever feel that way? Feel like God doesn't hear you? 
So the angel Gabriel appears and he says to Zechariah, appears, Zechariah is serving in the temple and the angel Gabriel appears to him and he says, Zechariah, don't be afraid, which is always a good start for angels, which means that they're scary, by the way. He says, don't be afraid. There's only one time in the Bible, by the way, the angel said, didn't say, don't be afraid. That was with Balaam. He wanted him to be afraid. But every other time, angel appears, don't be afraid. God has heard your prayer. Time out. So I even got into a theological discussion with somebody over this. I believe God even hears the prayers of people who don't know him when they're reaching out to him. That's the only reason why when we're yet sinners, Christ died for us, that we can cry out to God and he can hear our prayers. Now, that doesn't mean he always answers the prayers of the pagans. I'm not, I'm not the people who don't believe him or don't have faith. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. But the truth is, when anybody prays a prayer of faith and they're looking for God, he hears their prayers. Doesn't mean he always answers our prayers the way he wants us to, but he hears our prayers. And so he says, God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to a son, and you'll name him John. He'll bring you joy and gladness, and many people will be happy because of his birth. John is actually uh, foretold in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, as the one who was going to go before Jesus. And so what he was telling Zechariah was huge. And Zechariah had to think that God had forgotten him. He'd been praying all his life for children, and yet here he was, an old man, and the angel came to him. By the way, you're going to see in a second, and then he didn't even believe it. You ever feel alone? Let me tell you something. You're not the only one who feels alone. So, in another way, you're not alone in feeling alone. You can read the book of Ecclesiastes, the book of Job, Lamentations, Habakkuk. You can read the prophets in the Old Testament. Even the guy John who's going to be born at one point goes, Hey, can you make sure Jesus is who I thought he was? We get to points in life, no matter who we are, no matter how spiritual you are, you can get to a point in life where you think, God, do you hear my prayer? God, do you not know what's going on? Read through the Psalms. David, man after God's heart, sometimes he says basically, because we get to those points in life and we have to take a moment at those times to pray in faith. During those times, we have to say, God, I don't feel like you hear me, but in faith, I believe you hear my prayers. And take a moment to say, God, you know, I realize that you care. I just don't feel that way right now. So not only do we Understand that God's plans don't follow ours. That we don't always feel he hears. The third reason we doubt is because doubt and disobedience bring difficulty. The truth is sometimes we doubt because of our running from God. Sometimes we doubt because of our own decisions. Because we've done things that caused us or other people to suffer. And so we doubt God when the truth is we've brought it on ourselves. There's times that we bring our own doubt by the way we think, by the things we focus on. Sometimes it's just life itself that comes in. Zechariah says to the angel, how can I know what you say is true? Let me give you the translation of that in English, okay? To an angel, by the way, angels sent from God, very powerful, everybody's afraid of them, and Zach basically looks at the angel and goes, you're a liar. Not a good thing. I would advise you, if an angel shows up at your house today, that you don't start with this sentence, liar. That's what he started with. He started with, liar. I am an old man and my wife is old too. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. Which, by the way, you can almost hear a little irritation. You'll see an exclamation point in a minute. I stand before God. Now, those of you who have heard me talk about angels, I talk about angels being like mafia, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful towards angels. I know we're not to slander angels, but the truth is, you and I don't realize this angel is saying to Zechariah, Dude, God sent me. God the Father. The Godfather. Sent me. Sent me to give you a message. He sent me to send you an offer that you can't refuse. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. And he says, hey, I work for God himself. You really ought to pay attention to what I say. But then he continues, listen. Now listen, exclamation point. 
Oh, by the way, he said, he sent me to talk to you and tell you good news. <laughs> but then he's like, now I have some bad news. So listen, you will not be able to speak until the day these things happen because you didn't believe what I told you, but they will really happen. Sometimes you don't receive what God wants from you because you refuse to walk in faith. Sometimes the reason God doesn't bless us in the way we think he should but because we're walking in fear. Because we go through life going, God, I don't want to do that. I'm afraid to step out. I'm afraid to jump off the cliff. It's too scary to believe you. It's too scary to trust you. It's too scary to trust you in this situation or with these people or with this area of my life. Father, it's too hard. I was hurt before and I don't want to go back to doing that. Why are you calling me to do something that's so difficult? And sometimes we suffer because the truth is... We'd rather not believe God because it's too difficult to walk in faith. And so we need to own that and be honest about it and say, God, I just don't want to obey you. And there's times in our lives when we need to say, God, I, I don't, it's too difficult to follow you. If, if you don't help me to follow you, I just don't want to follow you. And we need to be honest with that. And then, So let's look now at how can I deal with that? So when that happens and I don't want to trust God, when it happens and I feel alone, when it happens and I, and I don't believe what God's telling me or life doesn't go the way I want it to, how can I deal with that? Because what will happen is when you walk in doubt and fear, you'll be exhausted. When you walk in doubt and fear, the Bible says you won't even have your prayers answered. When you have doubt and fear, it says if you want to please God, you have to walk in faith. So we want to do that. So how do we do that? Number one, be obedient even in difficulties. Let me say that another way. Do what's right when you don't feel right. Do what's right. When you don't feel right. And let me tell you where that helps you. Everywhere. Because if you, tomorrow morning, you wake up and you're a little sleepy. I mean, it's solar eclipse day. and It's going to be cloudy here. But anyway, it's solar eclipse day. We got a solar eclipse. Hey, boss. I'm a little sleepy this morning. I don't feel like coming into work. Anybody here think their boss will be happy to hear that? Anybody? Right? No, no. If you want to be a good employee... You have to do what's right when you don't feel right. If you want to be a good spouse, you have to do what's right when you don't. You don't yell at your spouse every time you feel like yelling. You don't only do nice things for your spouse when you feel lovey dovey. Oh, I just love you. I love you too. I love you back. I love you too. It's three in the morning. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> Can you go get the baby? I don't feel like it. You have to do what's right when you don't feel right in any relationship. If you have family members, guess what? You're not going to feel like being nice to them all the time. Guess what? Be nice to them. If you have a boss who's a doofus, Cherie, if you have a boss who's a doofus, you've got you've to be nice to them when you don't feel like it. You gotta do what's right when you don't feel right. I remember my dad. My dad was owned a con construction company, okay? He did a lot of, a lot of high rises and all kinds of stuff. He would have people come and work for him. And I remember, I was young. And I remember being on the job site going, gosh, that guy knows how to do all kinds of stuff. Why isn't he the boss? Why isn't he starting his own business? And then I would hang around enough and realize why. Because that same guy wouldn't come in the next Monday. What happened? Oh, he had a hangover. He didn't feel like coming in. If you, want to, if you want to go farther in life, do what's right when you don't feel right. If you want to go farther in faith, do what's right when you don't feel right. So you don't, you don't oh, I don't feel like going to church today. Well, congratulations, the pastor didn't either. Right? I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like helping in church. Well, congratulations, who does? No, nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, chairs! Woohoo! So why do you do it? Because you do what's right. Jesus did not feel like going to the cross. He did it anyway. The Bible says he scorned the shame. Outside, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were surprised he was saying so long. He's serving in the temple. When Zechariah came outside, he could not speak to them. Time out. He was supposed to give a blessing. So he couldn't even do that. So he starts making arm motions and they figure out he's seen a vision. And they knew he'd seen a vision. He could only make signs to them and remained unable to speak. Very Italian at that point, right? And then it says, listen, listen, listen to this next sentence. This is important. When his time of service at the temple was finished, he went home. Time out. You mean he stayed? He just had a traumatic experience. He can't even talk anymore, but he stayed. Why? 
because he was called to serve in the temple. So what did he do? He served in the temple. I am certain that after that experience, he did not feel like finishing his service in the temple that day. How many of us give up when God's getting ready to do a great thing in our life and we say, eh. You don't love your spouse only on days they're lovable. You don't love your children only on days they're lovable. You don't work only on days you feel like working. So can you be obedient to God in faith on the days that you don't feel like it? Yes. That's what faith is. Faith is, I don't feel like doing this, but I'm going to do it because I trust you, God, even when I don't feel it. John 16, 33. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sure the people on TV know. All right. I've told you all this. Jesus says this. I told you all this so that in trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. Boy, that verse is great. I don't like the next sentence. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. I would love to tell you if you have faith, God's going to just give you everything you want. If you have faith, you'll have to be provided, not just, not just what you like or need, but all that you want. If you have faith, God's just going to give you a plane. Actually, just the pastor. You're going to, you're going to pay for me to get a plane, right? right? In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulty. But listen to this, listen to this. But take heart. That means have courage or have faith. I have conquered the world. So when you have trouble, trust him. When things don't go the way you want, trust him. When you don't know what God is up to, God, I don't understand you, but I trust you. When you obey, when you don't feel like it, God will strengthen your faith through his spirit. God, I don't understand you, but I trust you. Number two, not only do we be obedient in difficulties, we need to give thanks. This one thing, by the way, can change your life. Later, Zachariah's wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and didn't go out of her house for five months. How many of you would like to be trapped in your house for five months? This is before cable and internet. Okay, I thought that might change your answer. Elizabeth said, look what the Lord has done for me. Wait a second, you just said you were in your house for five months. My people were ashamed of me, but now the Lord has taken away my shame. They didn't put the five-month thing here by accident. She was struggling. She was suffering. She had to stay home for months. And yet she was thankful for what God was doing. When you don't get everything you want, are you grateful? Or do you only focus on what God hasn't given you? I taught my kids the best lesson of their lives at a McDonald's. We pulled into the McDonald's drive-thru. I was two back. We were one, one before getting to the little... And I said to my kids, Hey guys, I don't have a lot of money today. We're just getting Happy Meals. The back of the van erupted. What? I want a hamburger. I want this. I want a junior whatever. I want a... And I said, Really? That's what you want? Well, we're getting Happy Meals. Well, I was not happy with it. I pulled out. What? <laughs> I went home. They had peanut butter, jelly, sorrow, and disappointment sandwiches. <laughs> and to this day, when we go eat, there's times we're on the way to eat. And my kids, some of them are in their 20s now. And I say, By the way, guys, no sodas tonight. Okay, Dad. Or even better, can I pay for my own? <laughs> what happened? I taught them to be thankful for what they have instead of being ungrateful for what they want. We're the same way. God, I want to give you thanks. First Thessalonians says, give thanks whatever happens. <clears throat> give thanks whatever happens. Give thanks if I like it. Give thanks if it's the way I want. Give thanks if God answers my prayers the way I want him to. Give thanks if God works my life out the way I want, right? No, no. Give thanks whatever happens. 
Why? Because there's always something to give thanks before. I want you to do a little practice. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. If you were able to do that, be thankful. Right now, there's people in the ER who can't do what you just did. Right now. Right now. Right now. Somebody's in the ER right now going, I just can't breathe. Be thankful. Take time every day to be thankful. When you find that you're discouraged and your faith is lacking, take time to be thankful. You'll find that your faith improves. Why? Because you'll see what God's done instead of focusing on what you want. And you'll focus on him instead of you. And your faith will increase because instead of trusting you, you trust him. So that if you're living in a box, you'll still be thankful. So if your air condition goes out of your house, you're still thankful. So if your refrigerator breaks, you're still thankful. Dear Lord, I don't need any of those things to happen. I'm not praying. <laughs> so be obedient, difficult to give thanks. Number three, my sermon's almost done. Hang in there. We're a little late today. Encourage others in their belief. If you watch that movie, if you'll notice what happened, the other people showed the picture, we believe in you. People need to know you believe in them. Not only, by the way, will it help them, it'll help you. As you help other people grow in their faith, sometimes it's just by telling your story. Sometimes it's saying to them, you know, I went through something similar, or this is what I went through. By the way, your deepest pain may be your best faith story. Your biggest failure may help somebody in their faith. Because you can say, this is where I failed, this is where I blew it, but look what God did. Even through my failure, God blesses. So Elizabeth talks to this woman named Mary who was having some baby named Jesus. You've probably heard that story, haven't you? She says, when I heard the, your voice, Elizabeth said, the baby inside me jumped with joy. And then here's what she says to Mary. You're blessed because you believe what the Lord said to you would really happen. What is she saying? Because my husband didn't believe the angel. <laughs> Our story was, we weren't sure God was going to answer our prayer, but you were blessed because you knew that God would do what he said. When's the last time you knew God would do what he said? When's the last time you said to somebody, listen, I can tell you from my life story that even when you blow it, even when you messed up, even when you do something dumb, when you trust God, he will see you through. And some of you, the reason you're struggling in your faith is because you haven't helped somebody else with theirs. Don't be afraid to go to somebody that you see having a hard time and do something to bless them. Hey, maybe God's blessed you financially. Go out of your way to bless somebody that you see. If you'd be anonymous and say, you know what? I see them struggling. I'm going to help them secretly. Or you see somebody struggling with a job or another area, and maybe you have a story. Hey, I've been there. I've been right where you're at. I'm praying for you. See, we should pray for one another. We should be there for one another. Sometimes just asking for prayer will build your faith. Listen to this next verse. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so God can heal you. When a believing person prays, that means when a faith person prays, great things happen. So pray in faith. Who can you encourage with your story? Now here's the final thing for you today. We've talked about how to walk in faith, how to walk away from debt, uh, debt, that too, but how to walk away from doubt. What's the next step on your faith journey? If you've never become a Christian, maybe it's the first step, which is Jesus, I want to give you my life. I believe that you died for my sin. I'm totally messed up. I ask for forgiveness of my sin and I surrender my life to you. Maybe that's your first step. Maybe you've done that, but you've never been baptized as an adult. Maybe you've never been baptized as a believer. Maybe you were baptized as a kid, but you never were baptized as an adult that said, I believe in Jesus, and now I'm being baptized. With your own words, with your own mouth, you're confessing him as Lord. You can sign up, and next weekend, you can get baptized at the beach. If you don't like the beach, you're scared of the beach, you sign up and put, I want to be baptized at the church, and we'll do it at the church. You sign up and say, I want to be baptized in a pool. That's fine. I'll baptize you anywhere you want. But take that next step of faith in being baptized. Maybe you've never joined a small group. Maybe it's time. Maybe you've never led a small group. Maybe it's time. Maybe you've never served or helped somebody. Maybe it's time. Maybe there's somebody that you need to ask forgiveness from. Maybe it's time. Maybe there's something difficult, a step that you need to do. Maybe it's time. What's the next step of faith God has for you? I encourage you. Just take the next step. It's scary. It's hard. It's difficult. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, God will give you the faith you need and will strengthen your faith. Those people that you think of as examples of faith are people who've gone through doubt and struggle and discouragement. And the reason they have faith is they've seen God take them through it. As you take that next step, know that God's going to meet you 
right where you take that next step. We're going to have a time of offering now. I'll be here if you need prayer after the service or you want to give your life to Christ. I'll be standing right up front. You can come and say, Eric, would you pray for me? Maybe you're here today and you need to take that next step. I encourage you to take that next step, whatever it is. We're going to give our offering in a minute, but we're going to go to the Lord in prayer first. Would you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that faith is not about how strong we are. Faith is not about what we know, but faith is about trusting you like little children who say, Father, we don't always understand, but we trust you. Lord, forgive us for our ungratefulness. Forgive us for our selfishness. Help us instead to know that you are the provider of all things good and we trust you. Father, thank you for growing our church. Thank you for continuing to do what only you can do. And Father, those moments when we doubt because things don't always go the way we want, we pray you would forgive us and help us to trust you even in the middle of struggle and trial. Father, we thank you for those times of aloneness where we realize now that you were with us all along. And Father, today we choose to put our faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, time of all.